There are a lot of people today who call themselves New Testament Christians, and they go to New Testament churches. The idea behind this is largely that they uphold the scriptures of the section of our Bibles which man has marked the New Testament over and above, if not to the exclusion of, the section of our Bibles which man has marked the Old Testament. Many of them carry Bibles which only contain the New Testament, with maybe the Psalms and the Proverbs tossed in. Think of those Gideon Bibles we find in hotels. Interestingly, New Testament Christians use this term very proudly, even though there is no biblical record of anyone calling themselves New Testament Christians. And indeed, no historical record of such until very recently. This doctrine of New Testament Christianity leads many people to largely ignore the law, the prophets, and even the history written in the first two-thirds of their Bibles. Is this a healthy mindset for a Christian to have? Leading up to the first advent and birth of Jesus Christ, the people of Judea had not only been anticipating a coming Messiah, but also knew when and where he would show up. The star spotted by the Magi was merely confirmation of what had been predicted and known for a long time already. How did they know this? Prophets such as Isaiah and Jeremiah and Joel had spoken of the Messiah centuries before. Moses himself before then had predicted the Messiah. They sang psalms written by King David, which spoke of the Messiah. In fact, their entire culture revolved around prophetic books, songs, and traditions which pointed forward emphatically to the coming Christ. And so when the Messiah finally came, nobody asked why they needed a Messiah, nor were they surprised. This was a long-anticipated and eagerly hoped-for event. When Jesus preached, he very often cited the scriptures, which many today call the Old Testament, saying, It is written. Some examples are Matthew 26, 24, Mark 9, 12, Luke 24, verses 44 through 46, just to name a few. As far as his audience was concerned, there was an indisputable authority to which Jesus was pointing, and nowhere did Jesus indicate that they were wrong in their assessment. The Old Testament writings are quoted extensively throughout the New Testament. Let's put all this in the context of reading a story. Say, for example, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. It's divided into three books. The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. Would you skip reading the first two books and almost exclusively read The Return of the King? If you did... You wouldn't understand what the big deal over a ring was. You wouldn't know what a hobbit was, or who Legolas was, or why Aragorn is also called Strider. And who's this Butterbur guy? And what was the Shire like before this Saruman fellow came along? You wouldn't understand the plot, the characters, Middle Earth. Literally, none of it would make sense. If you insisted on only reading The Return of the King, and none of the previous books you might be able to say you've read The Lord of the Rings, but in reality, you've only read part of it and understand even less. Without the law or the prophets, nobody would have understood a thing about Jesus Christ or a Messiah or anything Jesus preached for that matter. Everything he said built on a foundation laid by the writers and preachers who had come before him. In Matthew 24, verses 35 through 40, Jesus himself said that the greatest commandment was to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, souls, and minds, and that the second greatest commandment was to love our neighbor as ourselves. He was citing Old Testament writings as being the greatest of all commandments. The two commandments he mentioned were Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 and Leviticus 19 verse 18. Then he went on to say that the whole of the law and the prophets hang on that is, depend on, or are hinged upon, these two Old Testament scriptures. They're direct quotes from the very portion of the Bible which New Testament Christians piously ignore. But Jesus Christ himself said they're extremely important, even crucial, 
But how many New Testament Christians have decided they don't need those scriptures? New Testament Christians do themselves an immense disservice through lightly esteeming the books prior to Matthew. By insisting on only focusing on the final third of the book, they dramatically reduce their understanding of the entire text, from Genesis to Revelation, just as the reader of Tolkien greatly reduces his understanding of the Lord of the Rings if he only reads The Return of the King. Take a look at Luke chapter 24. When his disciples lost heart after his death and burial, the risen Christ rebuked them by saying, O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then the text says, Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. There's a lot here. First, Christ calls them foolish and then says they are slow of heart. They were not believing all that the prophets had spoken, and Christ was rebuking them for it. The New Testament Christian of today, who insists upon disregarding the law and the prophets, falls solidly under this same rebuke. He or she is foolish and slow of heart to believe. Then, having gotten that rebuke out of the way, Jesus explains himself to the disciples using Scripture. The only scripture they had at that time was the scripture which we call the Old Testament in our current Bibles. And where did he start? With Moses and all the prophets. Again, things which modern New Testament Christians have decided they don't need. Later on, in verses 44 through 47 of Luke 24, we read the following. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Where does he say that the Old Testament scriptures are no longer applicable under the New Covenant? On the contrary, he continues to appeal to those writings, the scriptures, which they then had, scriptures which he took the time to open their minds to understand. He must have considered that important. He then points out that everything about him in those Old Testament scriptures bore witness not only to him and his sacrifice and his resurrection, but also to his gospel. Later, when the apostles went on to preach the Christ, Philip was sent to preach to the eunuch in Acts 8. He finds the eunuch reading a scroll of Isaiah. When the eunuch asks for help understanding it, does Philip say, Hey man, you don't need to be reading that, haven't you heard? All that is expired. You need to become a New Testament Christian. No, that was not the case at all. Instead, he opened his mouth. And beginning from this scripture, that scripture being Isaiah 53, verses 7 through 8, he preached Jesus to him. Through the use of Old Testament scriptures, Philip not only preached Jesus, but also found events leading to the conversion and baptism of the eunuch. Do you think Philip would have agreed with a New Testament Christian today who would say the Old Testament is useless in promoting Jesus and his gospel? As a matter of fact, not a single one of the apostles would have agreed because the Old Testament scriptures were literally all the recognized scripture they had at that time with which to preach. The Gospels and Epistles were written long after many Christians had been converted all over the known world. Paul could attest to this as well. In Acts 17, we read of Paul going to the synagogue in Thessalonica where he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and giving evidence that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you, is the Christ. Again, what scripture did he have from which to reason? The very scriptures which New Testament Christians poo-poo as irrelevant today. It would seem Paul and Philip and the other apostles put great value in the Old Testament scriptures as a tool in preaching the risen and reigning Christ. Later on in Acts 17, we read of the Bereans who searched the scriptures daily to verify what the apostles were presenting to them. I remind you again that none of the biblical texts from Matthew to Revelation had been written at this time, 
So what scriptures did they have? The Old Testament scriptures. Paul, writing to his protege Timothy, said in 2 Timothy 3 verses 14 through 17, You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. What sacred writing had Timothy read from childhood? Most certainly not the epistle Paul was writing to him now, and none of the other texts which we call New Testament. And yet, Paul calls them sacred, inspired, profitable for teaching and reproof and correction and training in righteousness. He says they give wisdom leading to salvation through faith in Christ. He says they equip. So if we ignore these same scriptures, can we expect to reap all the benefits listed above? Certainly not to the same extent as someone such as Timothy. Jesus himself said something very important in John 5, verses 39 through 47, wherein he confronts the Pharisees for their unbelief. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me, and you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. The Old Testament scriptures, which they had, pointed to Christ, and yet the Pharisees, even with the subject of the prophecy standing before them, refused to believe. Hence why Christ said in verse 45, Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who accuses you is Moses, in whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, you will not believe my words. And indeed, the same holds true for New Testament Christians who toss out the Old Testament writings as irrelevant. They will never truly know and understand Christ. I hear New Testament Christians go on and on about having a personal relationship with Jesus, but I can guarantee they will never enjoy a truly personal relationship with Him if they continue to reject the very scriptures by which they can understand Him. Jesus told the Pharisees that without believing Moses, they would never believe him, and likewise for today's New Testament Christians. They will never really understand Christ or who he is. They will never have a personal relationship with him. Imagine trying to have a personal relationship with someone without knowing their past, without knowing anything except maybe the first couple of years of their life before you met them. It would be impossible. A relationship like that would never be intimate or personal. There would be so much unknown about that person, it would make the entire relationship awkward at best. No matter how often you claimed to love that person, no matter how often you claimed your relationship was personal. If you really want to know Jesus Christ, you have to read and study the Old Testament scriptures as well as the New Testament scriptures. Understand the first two-thirds of the book, and the final third will open up to you. Remember, man is the one who put the divider in our Bibles between Malachi and Matthew. Man decided which scriptures were Old Testament scriptures and which were New Testament scriptures. The fact is that they were all meant to work together, conjointly, to declare Jesus Christ and the gospel of his kingdom. It's foolishness to ignore two-thirds of that complete textual work because we happen to identify as New Testament Christians, something that isn't so much as mentioned at any point in the Bible. If you claim to be a Bible-believing Christian, as so many fundamentalists proudly advertise themselves to be, then you have to believe the Old Testament scriptures as well as the New, or you're a hypocrite, and you're willfully missing out on an unbelievably rich treasure trove. Mm -hmm.